Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at the binary tree structure. We're going to get the beginning setup for that. As you can see right here, we have what's going to form the foundation of our tree, what we're going to be working with to start this all off, and that's the node. And so again, we worked with the node class. We're going to be working inside our nonlinear structures, but we're still using that node of type because we're going to use that to hold everything that we're working with. And if you look over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that we have our node of type de uh, definition of our UML diagram. And again, node has a data member that's called data because it holds what type of information we're storing, whatever type we're going to use. We then have our uh, constructor that takes a default parameter of nothing, a constructor that takes a data parameter, and then our getters and setters for that data. So we can actually add to or change it if we need to. Just pretty basic. We then have our subclass of node. We're going to look over here in our, our binary tree node of type. And again, we have on this one, we have the data members of root left and right. The root left and right refer to the pointers are going to be either point up to the root that we have or our left and right subchildren that we'll be using to actually go along with that. And then we have on top of that, of course, we have our constructors. Weird, we always have to build our objects. We have our default constructor as needed, as well as a constructor that takes a type parameter because we want to make sure we can actually store information inside that. And then, of course, our hashtag basic getters and setters. Nothing special really to look at here. But we're going to go ahead and take a look now at the binary tree node class information we're going to use for that. So I'm going to go over here to my data structures class. And I'm going to go down to my model package, and then in my model package, I'm going to go to my nodes and go to binary tree node. Looking at our binary tree node class, you can see that we're starting off with, of course, the hashtag if and def. Um, that sets it up so that when we are actually working within this, if we've already seen this defined, we, we, we don't have to redefine it. So we don't have any type redefinition errors because we want to make sure we have that available. We then do, of course, use our hashtag include to node.hpp because, again, we're using the public inheritance of node of type right here. So we have to have that reference for that. Again, we're having a private section. We have root left and right right there as binary tree node of type pointers, and they are used so they can actually store various information within that. We then have our public, um, <coughs> excuse me, please. We have our public section. We have our constructor, the two different constructors, and our getters and setters. And again, our getters and setters look exactly like all the getters and setters we make in the entire semester. No big difference here, but we've got that set up for us. Let's scroll down and take a look at the constructors. Again, our constructors, we have two constructors. The first constructor has no parameter. And again, it calls the superclass constructor of node just by using the colon and then the node of type followed by parens right here. Really pretty basic that we've used for all of our subclasses inside C++ so far. And then we initialize our members to null pointer because again, we're starting off with everything at null pointer because we don't know what's inside there yet. Our second constructor takes a, a data parameter of type and we pass that um, formal parameter type data right here as an actual parameter after the colon to the node constructor. So we can assign it to the data member data inside that. And we have access to that. And then again, we set our root left and right again to null pointer because when we first create our binary tree node, we don't know who we're connecting to. And so we're going to use our setters to actually assign those values as needed. Scrolling down a bit further, we have all of our getters. And I named them get node associated with it. So get root node, right node, or left node. So we can actually attach those values. So we know exactly that we're talking to a node right here and not something else. So it's just a nice little naming for that. And so this uh, return this selector root, this selector right, or this selector left are all that we return for those values, which will retrieve all the nodes that are underneath them when we pick them up. So if I return root, I get access to its root and everything that's attached to it. So I can just grab that tree and all its connecting pieces and move it around. And so that's right there, really pretty easy. Our setters, again, it's pretty hashtag basic as always. It's a void type for the method type. And then for the parameter, I have new root right left. So you can actually see that we um, can use the this selector right here on this selector right equals right, where I have the name parameter matching the exact as the data member. Or I can have a different parameter name, like in this case, new root, and I assign that to root. No matter what I do, it always works. So we have that right there. And of course, because this is a header file, we always end with a hashtag indif. And again, nice little comment saying what file we're actually ending. So the structure itself of the node class, not really big, but that's something we have to actually have as we actually build our tree, which moves us on to our next structure, the actual tree itself. And so if we take a look at that, we're going to go back up to our diagram really fast. So go to model, go back up here to diagrams, and we're going to go to tree. So we're using right here a um, tree type. And again, I'm using the italicized right here to say that this is going to be an abstract class. We are going to use the pattern of using an abstract base class in C++ to actually implement all of our tree of type. And we're going to use this right here with having a, a protected variable root that is of binary tree node of type that all of our tree uh, instances will have access to. Where then we have um, three different groups of methods that all trees have to handle. In this case, we have our informational methods of get size, get height, is complete, and is balanced. These return either ints or booleans. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, getting the height, size, or tree. And notice that as these are all public methods, and the fact that they have no parameters, because when we're defining the actual structure of the tree for the public access, we do not want to have the public having any internal access to this. It's simply just 
This is the stuff that all public access to the tree needs to be able to do. In our data operation methods, we have insert, contains, and remove. These are the ones that um, every tree has to be able to do this. We have to be able to add values, see if a value is inside there, as well as remove a value if necessary. And with these, we've gotten defined as either void or bool. Uh, the contains DB obviously has to be a Boolean type because there's no reason to have it be void. That just doesn't make sense, but no worries. And finally, we have our uh, three main traversals that we are going to be using on the tree. Our in-order, pre-order, and post-order traversals are all of type void. And for the publicly accessible that all trees have to have, they all take no parameters. And there's a, this is by design because we don't want to, again, have the ability to um, do a traversal that could possibly be damaging to our structure because you can actually affect the structure of the tree by doing a traversal. And we don't want to provide that access to our users of the, on the public API. And so we have that right here. And so really quick, pretty basic. And again, we're going to see how by looking at this diagram right here, when we're creating an abstract base class, it's almost exactly the same. So again, to go back over here, go into the model section, go down to structures, go down to nonlinear, go down to tree. And here we have the actual tree implementation, quote unquote, where the abstract base class, you can see there's no actual structure attached to this. We do our hashtag include, where we give the path to the tree node class, because again, that's what the structure that we're using, especially for the idea of root right here. So we have to have that defined right here. This is an abstract base class and it has no sub um, class it inherits from. So we don't have any inheritance attached to the tree. And because it's a template class, again, we have the template class type because we have to be able to make this so it can store anything. Strings, ints, cars, crime data information, anything we want to actually use, we have to make this be able to store it. So that's why we have the template class on there. Uh, again, in our class section, we're just naming it really simple, tree, boring name. We don't know that it's abstract right here at the start because again, C++ doesn't have the abstract keyword that we're used to in Java. So we have to have that abstract by using this virtual equals zero attached to the methods we're doing this. And again, in C++, if you have even one method where it says virtual blah, blah, blah equals zero, then that's automatically makes it so that class is abstract. And the fact that all the methods inside this class are equal zero or virtual equals zero mean this class is completely abstract. There's no way it could actually have anything implemented for it. Because again, every single tree that we're gonna be using with this needs to implement these for themselves. This is not something that a generic value could have, like just like we have with list. And so again, we have a protected binary tree node of type pointer root. That pointer is referring to the root of what's at the base of the tree. And we're gonna use that for all of this. We then have our um, informational methods we just saw earlier. And again, uh, virtual again, it says that it can be overridden. And then it's of type int and then get size and it's assigned zero. And so what that does, again, it says that this method is undefined but it does return a type int when we actually implement it. Same thing with our get height is complete and is balanced. And again, I'm just using a nice little comment to say that these methods themselves are the informational methods and they are there so we can actually have that structure. Our data methods again, so we have data operations with insert, contains, and remove. And this is something that every single tree has to be able to do. So we have them right there. And they take a type parameter. And again, because of the fact that type is undefined, we have that template class type right here. And it has it just right here so that we can use the keyword type so that anything we put inside this will work inside that data structure. And finally, our traversals, in order, pre-order, and post-order traversal, defining how they're going to going over the structure of that data. And we have that right there. And so our template class right here, our abstract base class, really quite easy, not a lot of work to do. This is just the beginning set of what we have to do to make a tree. So now that we have those beginning components right here, let's go ahead and take a look at the much more advanced feature that we have to create a tree, an actual tree, which is the binary search tree we're going to be starting off with. Now, thinking back at our other projects, we take a look at, say, for example, some of the code we've been working on. Our other projects, the header sections are quite small. There's not a lot of depth to them. When we took it at the our linear structures, when I go over here to my diagrams. So for example, here on list, we only had those seven methods we had to have inside the list um, and a size that could be attached to it. So it's again, much smaller than we saw with tree. We look at the actual implementation of the list itself. So let's go over here to our linear list. And we look at our linear list right here and the methods themselves, there's not really that many methods that go inside this. So the link list right here has these methods that list itself adds. We have our stack that has these uh, methods right here to go along with it. And then list of types, there's a lot less structure to this. These things even though they can do lots of different things, they're, the linear structures don't have as much work that goes along with it. Let's go take a look again though at the value for our binary search tree. Looking at just the UML diagram for the binary search tree of type, so we have a structure right here that's a lot more complex than our linear data structures we're just looking at. And so we have this broken down by sections so we can actually look at the actual methods at, as in, in chunks so we can more easily process them. And so we're gonna take a look at just the structures today and then the actual header section. And then we'll, on the next video, we'll take a look at more detail. So in the structure section, we have three methods. We have our constructor and destructor, not quite methods, but still they work the same basic way. They're both public. However, we also have a protected method called destroy tree that we're gonna to use to actually destroy the structure itself 
because it's a bit more complex than some of the other structures we've been using for the um, linear data structures. We then have our informational methods. And your informational methods are the, those public methods we have access to that can give us information about the tree itself. Now, there's, the first four are the ones that actually belong to the abstract base class tree for get size, get height, is completeness balanced, which give us information about the actual tree itself that we can use to make decisions about what kind of tree we're working with. The last one, get root, is a nice helper method that we can use to do a couple different things within um, externally from the tree. Sometimes we need to actually look at the root node externally. This is a one that could, costly, uh, <clears throat> could possibly cause some damage. You may want to think about removing this from the actual implementation on your own. But for right now, we're going to take a look at this and use this a couple different times to actually look at the tree itself. We then have our recursive information helpers, ones that actually build the information that are used inside the informational methods. And I put them as a method that is a calculate size because it actually generates that. It's not a static value like we see inside <coughs> an array or a pretty constant value we see in a list. And calculate size and calculate are things that actually have to calculate. We have to actually figure them out. And then the is balanced, taking a parameter, verifies if that tree itself, that subtree, is balanced or not. And that can be used and applied to different parts of this. Same thing with calculate size and height. We can actually look at the different sizes and heights of subtrees within the tree itself. And finally, the is complete takes a node parameter as well as the index we're looking at currently as well as the size because we have to look at when we're talking the completeness of a tree, a couple different pieces of information. And we'll see that when we actually look at the um, implementation code section here. Our data operation methods, we have insert, contains, and remove. Really pretty basic. Everyone needs to be able to insert, contain, and remove those things. We also have two other methods we're going to use because it's often necessary inside a tree to find the minimum or maximum value. And that's one of the amazing things about trees. It's really quick to find this. And so we have those methods, find man and find max. We can actually use them really quick. And they return type, of course. We have one recursive data helper, which is the remove node, which is part of the remove method. Because when we're actually taking something out, we do have to recursively go through and remove that value. We could make a recursive helper method to go to insert as well, but we don't need to have that happen. We want to make an actual insert. We're going to start off and actually have this tree work pretty quickly. So we're going to start off basically by just getting that ready to go. And we'll take a look at it in our next video. In the traversal section, we have in order, pre order, and post order traversals. And those public sections right there, where they simply just take no parameters and are publicly visible, as you can see with the plus sign right there. And then we have our recursive traversal helpers. And I'm also having in this, we have two other methods that go along with that. We have our in order traversal takes a tree node um, parameter. And the, um, that was, again is also void. Same thing with post order and pre order traversal. They all take a binary tree node of type pointer because that's when we're starting with it. And that's why it's named in start, pre start, or post start, because it's where we start that traversal at that point. Uh, we also have the get rightmost child or get leftmost child. And those take and find the rightmost child of a certain node or the leftmost child of a certain node, which will be very helpful specifically for the find maximum and find minimum, but also for working with manipulation of the tree later on, because we have to actually find specific nodes of the tree to do specific data manipulation. And so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the actual header code itself. Just as we've seen before, the header section is a lot like what we see inside the UML diagram, but we want to actually take a look at it and take before we move on to our next section. Again, you can see up here at the path of the, um, we're in our nonlinear section of our structures group inside model, and it's the binary search tree. We have right here um, imports, um, we have right here the hashtag if and def, because hashtag if and def is required. We must use this when we're defining structures. We have three hashtag includes, tree.hpp. Bizarre, we have to include our parent class. We have IO stream because we need to actually do output as part of our traversal as well as possibly um, error information that we can handle. And then finally, we have hashtag include algorithm because there are some built-in algorithms we're going to be using to actually solve this. Again, using namespace SD, so we have access to the keywords that we're going to be using as part of our structure. And then, of course, template class type. Weird. We're always using this. Public inheritance from tree, and we are going to implement every single method for this. We're going to take a look first at the protected section right here. In the protected section, again, we could have this uh, group, so we have public protected, public protected, public protected. I don't find that to be very easy or con conducive to actually understand what's going on, so I like to do them in, in chunks so they actually can go with this. And I'm using the, the whack whack mark colon to identify it so we can actually have a section of our code identified from here. When I go over here to my drop down menu and I can have my protected methods, my public methods, and I can quickly go through to specific sections of my code right there. And then I'm using the mark right here so I can actually separate it out for implementation section. Uh, we, can, we can see that we, um, it's a little bit different from the UML diagram. The keyword, of course, int is on the left-hand side. We have our parameter. And then we have the named parameter here inside the actual uh, prototype for the method. 
Now again, in C++, I like to actually give a name for the, in the method variables inside the prototype because it helps me visually understand what I'm doing with this. And I can see that it's not simply just a pattern, but there's also um, a values that attach to it so I can know when I'm looking at my, my public API or my protected API, what I need to actually look for and use when I go down and write the actual methods themselves, or when I simply just glance at a file. And so again, we have calculate size and height that take pointers. We have is balance, which also takes a pointer of binary tree node type. But is complete again takes two ints as well as a parameter. We then have our traversal um, helper methods in order, pre order, and post order traversal that all take a binary tree node of type pointer. And then our destroy tree parameter, <coughs> excuse me, our destroy tree method uh, prototype. And then our get rightmost and leftmost child prototypes. And finally, remove node. Again, the order of these doesn't matter, but we do have to provide them before we actually do the implementation of the methods themselves. In our public section, again, using the whack whack mark to identify this as a section for public, so I can see it up here on my uh, quick select screen inside Xcode. And then we have our constructor and destructor. I like to put those first just because of the fact that they're really easy to see and know what I'm working with. I have my git root because it's immediate and available. My traversals and my demo traversal step method where I can see with using a whole bunch of C out statements, everything that's happening inside the traversal itself so I can see where things go. We then have our public API methods that we are implementing as part of the subclass of tree, get size, get height, is complete and is balanced, as well as contains, insert, remove, and then again, find maximum and find minimum. We have to have them right there. And again, those return type. So that's just the basic structure. And so that's where we're gonna start, um, leave off right here. So we have the beginning structure of the tree and have that and get that ready to go. If you have questions, take a look at this online. There's a lot of great resources you can help find and do this and then go from there. Thanks and have a great day.